praise the Lord from whom all blessings flow and we will exalt his name forevermore. How are you today? Blessings, blessings, blessings. Hallelujah. Welcome to Empowerment Culture Outreach today for the word of hope and healing. My name is Bishop Nana Sipola. God bless you for joining me. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Call a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend to join in and tune in into Empowerment Culture Outreach. Today's word of hope, I've entitled it, Out of Shame and Reproach You Will Shine. Out of all the shame and reproach you're encountering or have encountered, you will shine through that. Out of your struggles comes your shining. Out of your reproach and pain comes your shining. Isaiah 60 verse 1 says, Arise and shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord, the glory of the Most High God, the glory of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is risen upon you today. So arise and shine out of your shame and reproach. You will be elevated and you will be catapulted into your glory and honor in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hi there again. Grab a coffee, grab water, grab milk, grab juice, grab tea. Sit down and crank up your volume. Tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend to tune in and let's dive right into the word. Out of your shame and reproach, you will shine, my dear one. There's nobody on here on earth that has not encountered any shame, any pain, any reproach, any sorrow. Mm. I can't think of any living being that has not experienced one way or the other some shame, pain, and reproach. But the thing is, the Lord Jesus already told us that in this world, we will face and encounter tribulations and trials. But we should not be disheartened and dismayed and be afraid or concerned about it because he has already overcome the world. Hallelujah. So my dear precious one, out of your shame and reproach, out of your pain and sorrow, out of your struggles, you will shine, hallelujah, because God is for you and nothing can come against you to destroy you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Our test today, we take it from Luke chapter 15. Verse 7. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 15, verse 7. And we're going to read way down to 32. Hallelujah. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Fall afresh on the people and on the sound of my voice. Lord, touch every soul and every heart listening. Lord, speak to us in the name of Jesus. Let none of this be me. Let it be all of you to the glory of your name. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise, Lord. We exalt your holy name. And anybody under the sound of my voice who is sick, or in sorrow, in pain of any nature, Lord, physically, emotionally, mentally, Lord, heal them, touch them at the point of their need, at the point of their pain, their struggle, and their sorrows. Lord, give them peace, give them joy, give them all their high desires, according to your will, and according to your riches in glory, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Luke chapter 15, verse 7. Luke 
We give you praise, Lord. Hallelujah. I was discerning something, that's why I paused. But God is good. Hallelujah. Grab your Bible or turn on your phone, however you feel, or just listening, however you, you know, so you feel comfortable, however works for you, and you can read it later or go through it later in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Sometimes we encounter shame and reproach due to our mistakes, our own mistakes that we made, not paying attention, not being obedient, whatever the case may be. Sometimes out of our rebellion, pride, out of arrogance, we encounter pain, shame, reproach, you know, we, 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 we you know, impatience. We rush into things. Instant gratification, you know, brings us to certain places in life that we didn't, you know, we didn't think it would be there and don't have to be if we have practiced delayed gratification. We would not have that incident or that encounter. Sometimes out of our anger, jealousy, greed, Lies, covetousness, hatred, resentment, unforgiveness, fear or doubt can lead us into all kinds of things that we never thought we would encounter. Sometimes we know we can get into those things and those problems, but somehow we feel we, you know, we will be exempted from encountering that. Or wasn't thinking because we're not intentional about things we're doing. We end up places we don't have to be or don't want to be. But however it is, when we encounter that, sometimes we leave God. We leave everything with, to do with God because we feel so shameful. We think we cannot be accepted. God is mad at us and society is rejecting us and everybody will hate us and Oftentimes, that's not even the case. Sometimes it's just our own self-judgmentality. Our own self, you know, we put ourselves down. Our self-doubt and guilt. And, you know, we feel that shame and reproach. And sometimes it's put on us. Sometimes people lie about us or lie on us or accuse us wrongly or say things about us that are not true. And it's disheartening and it's disturbing and it hurts. And you feel like, you, don't, you, you know, you're helpless. You don't know what to do. Sometimes it's good to confront the situation in a peaceful, respectful manner. But if you know the person you're going to encounter, I mean, you're going to confront, pardon me, you're going to confront the person you're encountering that experience with. It's not very logical. Sometimes, you know, there are people you cannot discuss anything with them. They will start crying and carrying on. They will start, you know, getting excessively angry or anything, you know, over the board. But meanwhile, they did what they did. What, what you're, you know, approaching them with is 100% something they did. But they want to cover themselves. So, so when you know there's a person like that, there's no need to approach it. Just bring it to God in prayer. Bring it to God in prayer for God to touch your heart, for God to heal your heart, and for God to deal with them you know, the Holy Spirit to convict them, I mean. Dealing with them by convicting them, by, you know, letting them know what they did is wrong. That's releasing it to go for God to handle it, to deal with them in that manner. And you ask God to give you peace, to give you, you know, fullness of joy with, within your spirit. For you to forget that, that peaceful heart. So that you're not worried about that. So you don't carry hatred and resentment in your heart. So you don't carry unforgiveness. Because when you carry that in your heart, you begin to, you will give, it's hard to forgive those people in our own flesh. Because, you know, you know you can handle them. You can deal with them. You can tell them whatever it is that you want to tell them. But in the sight of God, you just don't want to do certain things. So if you know you can confront that person and they are, you know, a rational person and they're deep, you know, people with wisdom and you can deal with them, bring it as a confrontation in a peaceful, amicable manner 
talk about it, discuss it, and let it go. And after you can pray with each other if you know it's going to go that well. That way, you root it out, out of your heart. It's not there causing havoc, breathing hatred, bring, you know, breathing condemnation, breathing unforgiveness. Because unforgiveness, unforgiveness, that word, it's like a root. When it's rooted in you, you know, the branches become resentment, hatred, you know, jealousy. It becomes all kinds of things. Anger, envy. Because you hate them, you don't even want to see them do anything good or people liking them. This is all not part of God's plan. And this is not what God wants you and I to be doing. So when that happens, and we know we cannot confront it peacefully and amicably, we bring it to the Lord and pray about it and ask God to touch us, our hearts, to give us peace, to, you know, to comfort us, to cleanse the, all that debris out of our hearts so that we can be loving people. Because truth of the, the the matter is when we harbor those things in our heart it blocks us it blocks our prayers it blocks our blessings it blocks us and sometimes when we see that person it does something to our spirit and even our physical you know our heart and our mind we get angry we get upset we get confused we get it ruins everything. So the best way is to bring it to God, to deal with it in prayer. And ask the Holy Spirit to guide you, to teach you, to help you, and to comfort you, to bring peace within your heart. And as you have peace in your heart, as you have that joy in your heart, as you have the forgiving heart, you can transfer them to those who hurt you and transfer them to other people because we cannot give what we don't have. We can only give what we have hallelujah so when we're dealing with all these things sometimes the shame alone it's very difficult for us to let go you may have forgiven that person you have let it go but the shame is still lingering on and it's the, the reproach and everything of it you're condemning yourself and when god is not condemning you all that, you got to release all that to the Lord so that you can live a peaceful, fulfilled life in the name of Jesus. Amen. And always know that out of your brokenness, the Lord will make you beautiful. He makes all things beautiful in his time. Out of your brokenness, you may think, I'm too broken. Evangelist, you have no idea. I'm too broken. I'm too broken. I cannot be mended. I can't shake this off. Yes, you can shake this off. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. God is your strength and God is your hope. Jesus is your strength, your hope of glory. He will take away the pain, the shame, the reproach, everything out of you. Don't judge yourself. Don't condemn yourself. Don't put yourself down so you don't... That, doesn't become a seed or a root in you that you dish out to others without even knowing because when you keep and harbor those things it will be a root in you that you have and the branches and the fruits you're dishing to people will be hatred resentment envy jealousy anger sometimes you may not even pay attention that you're doing that or you have that but you do have that somebody on the other side of you across will see what you're really breathing out because of all those emotions will be clouding your judgment so you're not be you're not making the right judgment so it's very important to live our lives in with intentionality to live our life purposefully to live our life with peace within ourselves Love within ourselves, acceptance within ourselves, faith, believing within ourselves, so we can transfer that onto others. Hallelujah. We will be the fruit we dish out, will be a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Kindness, love, patience, pay faithfulness self-control it is important that we have goodness have the fruit of the spirit in the heart when we gravitate away 
from the fruit of the evil spirit, the flesh, the fruit of the flesh, as it tells us in Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 to 22, we will gravitate towards the Holy Spirit and that we will be bearing the fruit of the Spirit. So out of your shame and reproach, you will shine. You will rise. You will be become a beacon of kindness, a beacon of hope, a beacon of love, a beacon of compassion, a beacon of empowerment to everybody you come across and everybody in your life. You don't bleed on the people who never touch you when you deal with these things properly through prayer. If you need to seek counseling, seek counseling. So that you can have the wellness, well living, healthy living, good health, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, physically. That you be all rounded in fullness of peace and joy. Let's look at our test. Luke chapter 15, verse 7. I say to you that likewise, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 just persons who need no repentance. We all need repentance. When one sheep is lost, when Jesus loses one sheep, when heaven loses one sheep, when heaven loses one precious one, one precious person, he rejoices when he retrieves or finds it back. So when a sinner repents, heaven is joyful. And rejoices over finding that person. So whatever it is, if it's something you did through sinful nature, if it's some mistake you did, missing the mark, sin is just missing the mark. That's all it means. Missing the mark that the Lord has set for us. When you miss it, you've sinned. So when you miss the mark, when you're living in sin, you, you, you are seen as lost, a lost sheep, because Jesus is the good shepherd. So when you're living in sin, you are lost. We are his sheep. So when we can be the righteous sheep or the, the sinful sheep, but when we are living in sin, we are lost. So when we are lost and we, are, we, we repent and we come back to the Lord, when the Lord finds us or retrieves us back to himself, Heaven rejoices. Hallelujah. Or when, what woman, it says, this is Jesus speaking, what woman having 10 silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light up a lamp, sweep the house and search carefully until he finds it. And when <clears throat> she has found it, she calls her friends and neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I've lost. Likewise, <clears throat> one peace which I lost. Likewise, I say to you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Then he said, A certain man had two sons, and... The younger of the said, the youngest of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of the goods that falls to me. Give me my inheritance. This is what it means. So he divided them his livelihood. And not many days after the young son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country and there he wasted possessions with 
prodigal living. See, it's just like our children or when parents die or are alive and, you know, through their will, they, they give their, they leave something for their children. The hard earned money, the hard, you know, acquired um, resources get wasted by the children because they don't have the value on it. This is the prodigal son. He took, he asked his father to give him his portion of whatever inheritance he had for him and his brother or him and his family. He took his and traveled to a far country and wasted it by living anyhow, you know, spending it, living lavishly and spending the money and just wasteful. Anything you don't value, anything a person does most of the time, not always, but majority of the time, anything a person didn't work for or got it for free, they don't place value on that thing. They use it anyhow and misuse it because they didn't struggle to gain it. They don't have that value. They don't have that sentimental value attached to it. So they misuse it. Let us continue. 14. But when he had spent all, all there, arose a severe famine in that land, and he began to be in want. Then he went and joined with himself to a citizen of the country, and he sent him to his field to feed swine. A person who's from a wealthy home, because of disobedience and arrogance and pride, and instant gratification, he ended up working with somebody feeding pigs, taking care of pigs. Hmm. 16, yes. And he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pots that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. Look at that. When we leave the sight of God sometimes, this is how it is like. We live a glorious, fulfilled life, and we have the bait of Satan. We, we know we do things with the evil, demonic entities, and then the devil have access to our life to cause havoc, to use us, to do all sorts of nasty things with our life and with our precious destinies that the Lord has for us. So that fruitful life that we will have, the enemy gets us living life in mediocrity. But the devil is a liar and Jesus is the Messiah. We will pay attention and know who we are in Christ and whose we are the children of the Most High God, and we will live our life as such with intentionality and excellency so we don't end up living life in mediocrity, eating the, you know, wishing to have the parts of the pig, food of the pig to eat. Even that will be luxury for us. Whilst there will be goats and sheep and, you know, meals, feasts, will be made for us at our Father's table. God have mercy on us. By the grace of God, we will not end up like this. And if we are in this, anybody under the sound of my voice is in this predicament. I pray to you and I, I pray for you and I encourage, I encourage you that come back to your father. Jesus is calling you back to set a table before you in the presence of your enemies. And he will anoint your head with precious oil and your cup will over, overflow. You will be blessed to become a blessing to others. Jesus is calling you. Come back to him. Let us continue. Let's see what the prodigal son did. How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with anger? How many, son, how many servants of my father are eating good meal, having a feast, and have much more to spare? And I'm here struggling, eating pig's feed, feed you know, feed of the pig. Huh. Let us continue. I will arise and go to my father and I will say to him, 
Father, I have sinned against you, heaven and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servant. Now this is humility. When he came to himself, he didn't sit out of pride and say, I'm not going to go there. They're going to think this way about me. I don't want them to see that I'm struggling. I'm just going to stay here and suffer and, you know, with, you know, keep up my, my crown or keep up my, what do you call it? Ego. Keep up my ego. So keep up my dignity in this, in shame and reproach. But no, he humbled himself and said, I'm going to go and apologize to my father and have my father, you know, have me back. Hallelujah. Let us continue. But when he was still a great way of his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against you, heaven and in your sight. The father is also a father of compassion, a father of humility, a father with a heart of forgiveness. This is how most fathers and mothers should be as well. Not he was disobedient, he was disrespectful, he undermined my authority, and he went, ah, he's, he's, there he's, he come. I'm going to tell him this or that. Before I accept him, I'm going to get him to kneel down and apologize, to say sorry to me, to do this and to do that. No, the father did not do any of that. He had true compassion for his son. He has true humility in his heart towards his son and because he had that humility in him that's how he can transfer that humility onto his son and that acceptance and grace for his son let us continue And I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, bring out the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet and bring the fatted calf here and kill it. And let us eat and be merry for this. My son was lost and is was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Hallelujah. Jesus has much greater joy than this. When we are lost, when we drift and backslide from the Lord, and when we come back to him, he embraces us with love, with hugs, falls on our neck, and sets a table before us. Feed us. Hallelujah. With joy, with peace with love, with mercy, and grace. Hallelujah. Now his older son was in the field, and as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked, What things this means? And he said to him, Your brother has come, and because he has received his safe and sound, your father has killed the fatted calf. But he was angry and would not go in. Therefore, the father came out and pleaded with him. So he answered and said to his father, Lo, these many years I have been serving you. I never transgressed your commandments at any time. Father, what's up with this? I have been here many years serving you. I have never disrespected you. I have obeyed all your commandments. And my brother who disrespected you, sometimes we are like that. I've been the good son. I've been the good daughter. I've been the good worker. I've been the good neighbor. I've been the good church member. How about that person? How about this person who did this and that and the other? How about, you know, why are you embracing and accepting them after all they did? We need to have compassion. As Jesus have compassion, we have to have 
unconditional love for one another. We have to embrace and be kind for with one another and have forgiveness of heart for one another and have humility. Hallelujah. Let us continue on. At any time, and yet you never gave me a young goat that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this son of yours came, <laughs> who has devoured your livelihood with harlots, you killed the father calf for him. And he said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that I have is yours. It was right that we should make merry and be glad, for your brother was dead and is alive again, and was lost and, and is now found. Hallelujah. Precious one, it doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter how the route you took to gain what you gain. It doesn't matter what mistake you did. It doesn't matter what, you know, presumptuous sin, presumptuous mistake, intentional wrongs that you did. Jesus is open hands waiting for you and he's going to run towards you. Start running to him and he will run towards you and embrace you into his bosom and throw a big party, a feast for you and rejoice with you and the heaven and the heavenly host will all come together and rejoice because you, the lost sheep, has come home. Precious one, out of your shame and reproach, you will shine. Come back to the Father. Matthew chapter 11 verse 28. Jesus said, Come unto me, all you who are burdened and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Jesus is calling you to come unto him. With all your burdens, your labor, your care, your struggles, your shame, your pain, all of it, your sorrow, Bring it to him. He said he will give you rest. It's take upon me. Take upon you and learn from me. Take upon you. Learn from me. Take, take the things I do. Take, take my character. Take my qualities. Take my nature. And learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. My dear listener, come on to Jesus. Jesus is calling you. It doesn't matter how far off you think you've gone. Yeah, evangelist Nana, you have no idea how far I've gone. Yes, I understand. Jesus understand it much more better. He's open arms waiting for you. He said, come unto him. He's calling you. Come unto him. Call unto him. The Bible said, anyone who calls upon the name of Jesus shall be saved. Precious one, if you call the name of Jesus, you shall be saved. It didn't say every Christian who calls upon the name of Jesus Every empowered woman who calls upon the name of Jesus, every empowered man, every rich man, every man, you know, intelligent man, every intelligent man, every powerful man, every righteous man. No, anyone who calls upon the name of Jesus shall be saved. My dear precious one, it is time to turn your life around. Go and meet Jesus. Call on him. Pray and ask him to forgive you all your sins. And you are ready to give your life to him. Tell him to use you for his glory. Call on to Jesus. He said his burden is light and his yoke is very easy. God bless you. Receive the peace of Christ. That surpasses all understanding. Let it be yours now and forever. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Like it. Share it. Subscribe now. Give me a thumbs up. I will appreciate it. You see that thumbs up behind me? Give me one. Shalom. Peace. Love you lots.